Uh, so we got 50 points on the Nifty. 11,035 is where we stand at. Uh, so, you know, the, what looked like it was a clear day of some profit taking. I mean, isn't uh, bulls aren't giving up that easily? And uh, there is some pullback which is happening uh, from, uh, you know, the levels we saw about an hour ago. Uh, the once a big stock of uh, mover of the day is uh, Edelweiss. The stock should come up on your screen. We put out the news earlier with Abhishek. Uh, I think it's still got about 7% gains. CDPQ is investing, putting in money into Edelweiss's uh, NBFC uh, business. Rashesh Shah is chairman and CEO of Edelweiss Financial Services, and he's joining us right now to take some questions. Uh, Rashesh, thanks very much. Good morning. Great to have you here. Prashant Desai. Uh, could you begin by telling us a little bit? Good morning. Hi, Prashant. Hi. Uh, could you tell us how much uh, how much does 1800 crores get CDPQ in terms of a stake in the business? By when will this transaction be complete? Uh, and uh, other sundry details, just to kick it off. So we signed the agreement. Now we'll just you know wait for the statutory approvals that we have to you know RBI and others and all we have to get. So we're hoping that between uh, four to five weeks we should consummate this particular transaction. As you know, it's 1,800 crores, which will come in three tranches, $150 million now, then uh, another $50 million after a year, and another $50 million after a year two. It's a compulsorily convertible, uh, you know, instrument. So it's almost like equity, and uh, uh, it will get converted anywhere between year two to year five. And uh, we expect that the conversion will be a function of the performance, but currently expectation is that they will end up owning something in the teens kind of a stake between, you know, 13, 14 to 18, 19 percent kind of a stake based on the company performance, ROA and uh, PAT of the company in the conversion year and which year they convert. So I think, uh, as you know, our, our relationship with CDPQ has been over the last couple of years, they've invested in our ARC, they also investors in our stressed asset fund. So we are very happy that this is an extension of that relationship. And not only do they bring in capital, they also bring in very strong governance. We saw that in our ARC business also, that their involvement allow, allowed us to really scale up the governance structure of that business significantly. So here also they are coming, they will be on the board of the company. And over the next few years, they will help us, you know, have a more independent board, scale up governance, all the processes around that, and that to us is also very invaluable. Uh, Rashish, you said, uh, so, see, post, I mean, ex current understanding expectation is that uh, CDPQ will end up owning between 13 to 19 percent in, uh, uh, in uh, ECL, the NBFC business. Yes, yeah, our entire credit business, because the NBFC business will also have the housing finance company underneath that and also that's what we call a credit vertical. The currently the credit vertical has a book size of about uh, 30,000 crores and the current equity is about 5,000 crores. So we have currently 5,000 crores equity and approximately th 30,000 crores of assets which are both wholesale and retail. So uh, it's a very well diversified uh, you know, NBFC. Uh, which is not very large because in these days, you know, 30,000 is neither small nor large. So we are right in the middle and with this capital infusion, we will uh, be able to not only organically, but if there are inorganic opportunities also, we'll get a chance to grow. And we're especially seeing a lot of opportunities in, in retail, in uh, agri-financing, in home loans and all these particular areas, affordable housing. So our idea is with this capital infusion and with the partnership with CDPQ, we should be able to scale this business, which is of a fairly decent size, but still has a lot of headroom for growth. Mm. Rashi. Okay. Okay. Hi, Rasesh. Uh, good morning. Uh, what does this do to uh, the borrowing capacity? Uh, the primary reason for this infusion, uh, can we say it helps you to lever more? Obviously, every equity uh, basically, you know, allows you to gear up and grow. So as I said earlier, we currently have 5,000 crores of equity and approximately 30,000 crores of book, which means we are geared currently 5 is to 1, 25,000 crore borrowing and 5,000 crores of equity. Mm. Our plan is to maintain this. We obviously have, we'll also have return earnings because this business makes ROE also. 
So with the retained earnings and this capital, we think for the next three, four years, we have enough ammunition for growth organically, which because, you know, we have been growing at about 20, 25 percent a year in the asset book, uh, in, the, in the size of the asset book. But importantly, it also gives us opportunity for inorganic if there is any consolidation in the industry. Especially we are seeing that with what has happened in the last four or five months, we expect there will be some consolidation in the NBFC industry. And there are quite a few interesting verticals where we are not there. So we there are a lot of retail verticals also which are very interesting. And if we were to do something organically, we'll have to build a platform over three, four years. But with this capital, we can also look at acquisition opportunities if they are appropriate for us. Hmm. Rashish, can you just uh, expand a little bit uh, on these inorganic opportunities? Because, you know, there are these kind of opportunities which are emerging. Say, for example, a DHFL is looking for a strategic partner. Uh, are you looking for, say, an acquisition of an NBFC, maybe smaller in size or whatever it might be, or a loan book or, or a portfolio that you're picking up? Just expand on these kind of opportunities that you're talking about. Sure. So we currently don't have anything, so there is no announcements. I just want to be careful about making any forward-looking statement. Uh, but we are open to acquisitions. And as I said, see, uh, even technology is playing a big role and there are a lot of the new fintech platforms that have come about but with the you know upheaval of the last four or five months a lot of those good quality platforms which have maybe small books around them uh, could be looking for strategic partners could be looking for even uh, you know uh, for selling especially a lot of them which are funded by pe investors so uh, there is going to be a lot of consolidation in that there are also going to be a lot of specialized players because one of the other things that is going on in the NBFC arena is a lot of people are moving from a single product line. Like let us say if you are just a, um, you know, a housing finance company or an auto finance company or a gold finance company or a micro finance company to now becoming part of a larger platform. You recently saw that Bharat Financial is being acquired by Indescent Bank. So what we are seeing is single product lines are now getting consolidated into a broad uh, diversified credit business because in order to scale and to get some stability we think a, a diversified credit business is a much more robust and stable one so okay. there could be a lot of single product smaller books or smaller businesses that could be acquired Rasesh your investors will want to know more about the stress on the book what is your exposure to Plex shares Uh, not much, uh, because you know what you see is not just our book, but also we run funds. Also, we have a structured credit fund, and as we've been saying, a lot of the strategies we do a part of it on our book, which is like a co-investment, and a uh, part of it is in the fund. So all the recent news that you may have seen, a lot of those are also in the funds that we manage. So we manage a lot of credit funds. We have now currently close to four billion dollars of alternative assets under management about 24,000 crores and a lot of those assets are credit strategies in stress credit opportunities in structured and uh, you know what you said promoter funding opportunities in real estate credit opportunities so a lot of this is on that our own book on on promoter funding should not be more than about three to four thousand crores approximately uh, but a large part of that incrementally will also be in the funds that we manage. So we've been having, uh, our strategy has been, we find a lot of this, you know, what are high yield, good strategies, well collateralized, but have some complexity around them. Uh, we have found that it's actually better to move this into a privately funded structure like an AIF or a credit fund where our NBFC can be a small co-investor with that. So in a way, we have skin in the game, which gives a lot of comfort to the investors in the fund. But you, you don't use your balance sheet, but you fund it through what are called the privately funded vehicle. This is a global trend, and you must have seen a lot of global uh, PE firms also have expanded into private credit in a big way. And we think with the recent upheaval, the private credit opportunities, which are privately funded structures, will now take a lead going forward. Okay, can then uh, you, you've given us some number for the promoter funding book of your NBFC. Can you give us some idea of what proportion of your funds, your various credit funds and AIFs have uh, promoter funding exposure? What percentage of the total AUM? <clears throat> 
uh, <coughs> I think in our structured credit fund, because structured credit fund is the only one that follows this strategy, the, currently the structured credit fund is approximately with co-investment and all that put together is about $500 million. Uh, is the current one we are uh, uh, also you know as this fund gets deployed we'll obviously do another fund so we've been doing this what is called Edelweiss structured opportunities fund uh, we did ESOF 1 which was 230 million dollars we now have ESOF 2 and uh, hopefully we are hoping that we'll have ESOF 3 and 4 and all in the coming years you know how much is in promoter funding is what I'm asking of this 500 this 235 what share is so, deployed so, to promoter so, so actually what Loans happens is so what happens is, Lata, this is not called promoter funding. This is called structured credit. Okay. In structured credit, you have sometimes promoter, uh, uh, you know, it can be a loan to an operating company with promoter shares as an additional pledge. Okay. It can be uh, the promoter shares plus some real estate plus some other assets. So these are all structured credit opportunities. I think the promoter funding is a very old one. Uh, and uh, increasingly, if it's only pure promoter funding, then in the last few years, the mutual fund market has been more active in that because the cost of funding is lower. Uh, what, what our fund does and what we do is mainly structured credit, which has shares as one of the collateral, but usually there is a collateral package around that. Uh, fair enough. Rashid, just to come back to CDPQ, uh, they've got uh, a stake in the uh, ARC business. They have a, some stake in the listed Holco alternate investment funds, uh, where, where do they come in next? I think that is what uh, people would like to know. And generally this, this, this point has been, uh, people have wondered whether at some point you will look at, uh, you know, sort of uh, demerging a, a lot of these businesses separately or all these businesses will be run for some time to come under the Edelweiss umbrella, under the whole core. So actually, uh, we are uh, very grateful. You know, uh, you know, CDPQ is a very large pension fund, a very good, um, you know, partner, very high quality fund. Really taking a long term view on India. They have been very bullish on India in the last four or five years, and we are we are we are truly very honored, grateful to have a partner like that. Uh, we hope that this partnership keeps on growing as the opportunities in India, especially in the credit arena. We think credit is now the new equity in India, and there are a lot of new opportunities coming up in credit. And every time there was there is an upheaval, like in the last few months, new opportunities in the credit uh, you know space will start opening up, and we hope that this partnership can continue to grow. Uh, we currently have no plans to spin off any of the businesses. Our idea of, of getting an investor in the credit vertical was that we can create focus on this. We can also create some capital and some currency, which, as I said earlier, allows us to take care of inorganic opportunities, also using stock sure. and cash to also consolidate as we go forward. So our idea is to run this as an Edelweiss group. But as you know, in our insurance company also, we have a partner called Tokyo Marine, mm. who is a strategic mm. partner. In ARC, we have, uh, we have got a partner. So here also now we have an investor got and it. a partner. Rajesh, uh, request you to stay with us. We have a bunch of uh, questions more, so uh, we'll put them to you, but have to take a commercial break. So very quickly, uh, we take that break and we are back with Rajesh uh, in a jiffy. We resume our conversation with uh, Rasi Shah, the chairman and Edelweiss of, uh, uh, sorry, chairman and CEO of Edelweiss. They have just secured funding, additional equity funding from CDPQ for their lending businesses. Uh, Rasi, I wanted more comments on the NBFC industry, the mutual fund industry, the financial sector in general. Uh, do you still think that there is some fragility? or likelihood of an accident uh, because of the uh, LAS uh, uh, um, you know, loans against shares or because of real estate? Is there an accident possible? I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, the last quarter was a very critical one because there were a lot of commercial paper which had to be rolled over and I think uh, all of us were watching very closely. Mm. Now, if you look at the industry as a whole, yeah, the liquidity is still fairly tight and it's also expensive because interest rates, even today, you know, when you're, the gap between the repo rate and the 10-year GSEC is actually on the, on the higher side, the credit spreads are still fairly high, liquidity is still not as easy as it should be, though it's ease off because of the OMOs by RBI in the last few weeks. 
but i don't think the industry is is fragile mm. because i think uh, people have been able to manage their alm they have actually made it very robust and the scrutiny from the regulators from the media from the banks and the mutual funds all of them have ensured that people are constantly watching and being careful about it so on an average all of us like we are holding a lot more liquidity than we were normally holding so i think the industry will eventually come out stronger this is a good consolidation phase and uh, what we have gone through in the last 4 5 months has been in a way a good stress test it's a real time stress test that has happened so i don't think there is an accident that will happen as you correctly said you know asset quality is a key one to watch because whenever liquidity is tight asset quality uh, accidents can happen but those are uh, you know india in the banking sector we have gone through almost uh, 12 to 13 lakh crores worth of npas yeah. compared to that the sizes of the promoter funding book for mutual funds the, the real estate this is a much smaller one idea is to be very careful be highly vigilant not take anything for granted but ensure that you know the asset quality stays under control because the liquidity crisis that was there a few months ago is i think past us uh, the crisis is not there it's still now what i call tight liquidity and expensive uh, capital now well, that's good to hear from a veteran like you uh, the question that market participants ask one another is what if you don't find another uh, person to refinance a loan against <coughs> share that falls due Uh, you know, it's gotten passed on from NBFCs to mutual funds, etc. Uh, banks definitely cannot buy it. Who will buy it from you, and will that stop the musical chair? So, see, it's very important that anybody, whether it's bank or mutual fund or NBFC, who is giving share, you know, a, a structured credit, a loan against shares, there has to be a clear exit, and exit should be not by refinancing. Mm. but should be via asset asset monetization so like in our underwriting uh, one of the aspects we always look is when the asset monetization happens a lot mm. of this structured credit opportunities are there because there is an uh, there, there is a liquidity event coming mm. up either some <coughs> asset is getting sold or a, or a capital infusion is underway and because you don't want to depend on refinancing because in the last 10 years we have seen yep. there will be a few quarters where any refinancing is impossible so you'd never depend on refinancing as a primary exit strategy okay all right that's good to hear uh, thank you very much rasheesh shah for joining us and giving us your perspective of course on your own company and on industry itself i don't know if everybody who lent money Uh, was aware that uh, a refinancing option will not be available but we will have to wait and see when the chickens come home to roost prashant oh absolutely uh, lata so interesting conversation with the, uh, with there with rashesh shah i mean covering a whole range of uh, aspects rashesh thanks very much for being with us here uh, today on cnbc tv 18